Um, what do you, so with this change in TAC PC2, uh, at least with the enlisted side, because just, just like us, you guys are heavy on enlisted, not as many officers. Um, the TAC PO is here to stay. It's not going anywhere, right? Like you guys are still bringing in rated officers, but the end goal is to get the all TAC POs, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's to have those TAC P officers that will lead the squadrons. Um, personally, I don't ever see the rated, rated pilot to go away because that brings an element to the, the liaison part that uh, we need uh, with the Army. Um, so, but I think you're going to see, le you're, well, you see it now, less and less of the rated side and more and more on the uh, TAC PO side. Um, because they're going to be the true leaders within the squadron, uh, coming up with the, the guys on the teams and then into those leadership positions. Um, but, um, you know, whether there's a push to get rid of the rated side or keep it, um, personally, I think we need to keep some of those um, because that, that's an aspect that, um, that we bring to the table that nobody else does. Uh, and it's that liaison piece that uh, can be critical at certain points during uh, planning. Okay, cool. Uh, one of the other ones is, what do you think about the the whole swimming aspect being, you know, thrown into the TACP pipeline now? It's not at the same level as, as CCT, SR, and PJ, but, like, I mean, I'm sure you're aware for the folks out there that, like, that is a surprisingly hot topic. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I don't mind it. Um, I'll, if they want me to swim, then I'll swim. I don't, um, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think there is, uh, I think there is, there's aspects to being comfortable in the water that people don't understand. And until you are getting conditioned in the water, you don't, um, I've done multiple water jumps, uh, under canopy and, and it can be a very, um, it can be it can be very uh, spiked in adrenaline, very uncomfortable when you hit the water uh, <laughs> trying to get out of that chute. Um, the PJs are not fun to do water jumps with because I didn't realize I had to swim to the Zodiac. I, I was used to jumping with first group guys up in Washington who drove the Zodiac to you. Um, so, uh, so I uh, it, it it can. I think there's a lot of things uh, with that because you got to think of our a, a, our AORs. Um, we have one AOR that is completely covered in water, um, and you could find yourself in the water. Um, so being comfortable with that and being in condition to deal with that uh, could mean the difference between life and death. Um, I don't, you know, we don't necessarily need guys dive qualified, uh, but I need dudes who can, you know, if they're in the Pacific do things in the Pacific without limitations. Um, uh, on the other side, like uh, I was just going to say uh, one last thing to that is on the other side is, um, you know, it, it's a something that sets you apart too. So. Oh, it absolutely is something that sets you apart. It's <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I, it's funny. I, I just, I had a, I saw that question come up and I'm like, Ooh, I definitely got to ask this <laughs> just because it's people that understand that. Like it is, it is back and forth a lot. Um, yeah. So another one. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. What are some additional schools that you guys get a chance to go to? Uh, not as a, not necessarily as a soft tech P, but as a, a normal kind of tech P like, bread and butter tech fee. Yeah. Uh, so really, uh, if you're going to go with your army uh, counterparts, you can go to any school you want. Um, that's the best part about being that liaison in the army and setting that good impression. Um, you you become this unicorn in the building, uh, so to speak. And uh, they, man, you just set yourself apart from them. They'll, they'll give you any school out of their own school allocation that you want to go to, Air Assault, Pathfinder, Sapper, uh, Ranger School, um, Airborne, all those, which Airborne is becoming part of our pipeline now completely. So that that's a different uh, beast there. But um, 
And then if you're at units like the 82nd uh, in Washington, stuff like that, you know, you got free fall chances, stuff like that. So, uh, and then of course, um, I went through a course uh, while I was at Knox. Uh, I was at Fort Knox for five years, and that's when the Army Reconnaissance school course was there. Um, and so being able to go to courses like that that some people don't get the chance to go to um, because you're stationed in a location where the course is happening um, really builds upon what your knowledge and your, uh, what you do as an individual. Uh, I learned a lot from that course, and it was awesome uh, going to. Uh, and then um really uh and it's not really just the courses you get to go to like that but also other courses that the army holds that you know a lot of people aren't familiar with like their driver training courses and their shooting courses and and all those other courses because like i said you being attached to that unit you're you're going out there doing table fires with them you're doing hanging mortars and pulling lanyards to artillery pieces, things like that. So, um, but yeah, courses wise, like any army course, uh, you ain't good with your battalion, your brigade, you, you, you have the opportunity to go. Yeah. Sounds awesome. I'm a little, I'm a little jealous a little bit sometimes, you know? Um, so the, one of the other things we get a lot is, uh, you know, people tend to, to overlook the first, 18 steps and jump to step 226. So what is the process to become a soft tack P? So, what, is, what does that look like? So uh, for step one is be motivated. Uh, <laughs> be, be, <laughs> be good at what you do. Um, be good at what you do at the ASOS. Uh, be, learn to follow and then learn to lead. Um, be motivated be knowledgeable, be, be that person that's hungry for every bit of knowledge you can get, um, stay in your physical condition that you need to stay into. Uh, and then, um, when the time comes and that call out comes out, uh, put your package together, follow the instructions on the guideline, put everything together that you're supposed to put together and, and send it in, uh, to be picked up for that phase two. Um, and then when you go to phase two, put out a hundred percent, like, uh, guys just feel like they're people look good on paper um but that doesn't mean that they're good uh so i'll just put it that way but uh uh you got you got to show up and, and you got to put out uh or you're not you're just wasting your time um so um, especially the way that, that is pretty we all look good on paper <laughs> oh we we are amazing we saved the world three times over. Exactly. <laughs> War's over, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I that's well, the the um, usually we try and ask people, uh, especially in in your kind of position, you know, advice that they would give because our demographic is you know sixteen to really twenty five, maybe thirty sometimes uh, year olds who are wanting to come into tag P, CCT, SR, PJ, and the like. So. Mm -hmm. um, like as we kind of wrap this up, what would be your your kind of parting uh, advice to those folks? Uh, so, one, I think my advice comes into like three, uh, two. Uh, we'll put it two, two things. All right. Uh, when you when you're young and you learn to ride a bike, two things happen first thing happens is you build confidence. Um, you get on that bike, you take off your training wheels, you start to ride and your confidence builds up and you start riding better and better and better and better, faster, faster, faster. You start doing jumps, you start breaking, you start doing all those things. So your confidence is getting high. And then the second thing happens, you have your major wreck. When that major wreck happens, that's cockiness that causes that wreck. So your confidence has turned to cockiness. So what I would give, give as advice is when you're looking at these career fields, you got to be confident in yourself. Um, but as you're going along and you're training and you're doing all these things, don't let that cockiness or that confidence turn into cockiness. Um, so, uh, being confident uh, as an individual that you can do anything you put your mind to, you just got to find that you got to find that willpower to put yourself in the positions that you want to be in. And you got to seek out help and advice from people who either been there or people who are also wanting to go that you guys can now start working together because it's that 
guy to your left and right that are uh, or gal uh, that's motivating you to be better, to be stronger, uh, and to push yourself beyond your limits. Um, I think that is, and then with that is, um, as that time goes on, you're going to build confidence. You're going to start seeing your limitations and those things. Um, as you build that confidence, don't fall into pit holes of rumors and, well, I heard this about this and I heard this about that. Like, seek the advice from the people who have the knowledge um, and ignore the people who don't, who want to talk about everything um, because that can always get you uh, in bad places because they're going to give you negative feedback. There may be some truth to it but there's probably not complete truths or there's a lack of understanding in some of what they're saying. So they don't understand the bigger picture. Um, so um, <clears throat> I'd say the big, and the big takeaway for people who are getting ready to either take the plunge is, you know, have your mind straight, mind health, spiritual health, family health need to be a hundred percent. Um, get those things right, get yourself in order. Uh, and when you show up, you'll be able to be a rock star and move out. Um, that would be my advice to them. Yeah. I would say that that would, uh, that cockiness and stuff would translate to guys and girls that are already on team or at a squadron as well. <laughs> yes. But sometimes yes, it absolutely. takes that, sometimes it takes that big wreck to just, like help <laughs> yep. a little bit of uh, humility. So, well, that's.